Hello everyone. In this video, I will show you how can you use the hugging face models on Azure. So this video will be completely like no code solution. We will not be writing even a single line of code. Rather, we will be just updating few keys and the inputs in order to make our solution work. So let's get started. So first of all, you need to go to Azure portal and once you are logged in, you can go to Azure machine learning there. You can create a new workspace and select your resource group and here you need to provide the name or unique name for your AML instance. Review plus create and it will go ahead and create an instance for us. So I clicked on create. It is going to take close to a minute here. Default is ready, our App Insights is ready, it's working all for the storage account. Let's give it a few more seconds and it should be ready. So the deployment is ready, let's go to the resource. And here is my URL for the studio. So this we are doing using Azure ML Studio. So you know that nowadays lot many mo models are available on Azure and that is through Azure ML Studio. So it's not only about hugging face, you can find Mistral, even these are the various models you uh, available for us. So now next what you can do is uh, you can go to model catalog and search for the model which you are interested in. So either you can search with this right hand side panel or you can even search from here. And if you're not sure, you can directly go ahead and type here hugging face and it will provide you with the list of hugging face models. So these are the ones I will quickly take this one, the text classification one. So let's select this one and here it will provide you the information like it is a pre-trained language model available on Hugging Face Hub and it is specifically designed for text classification tasks in the Transformers library. And on the right hand side you can see that this is the model ID. In case if you want to access it through code then you can use this particular model ID. So I will go ahead and click on deploy. So here we need to create a real time endpoint. Let's go ahead and do that. So select the name of your template, whatever you want, the virtual machine you want. And I will go with just one instance. Here you need to provide the name of your endpoint. If you want, you can enable this. But these are the features which are requ required when you want to go with monitoring or kind of stuff. So it is going to deploy this model and once it is done, we will be redirected to the page. So I will pause my video here until it get deployed. It's been 15 minutes and it is still going on. Let's give it looks like it's going to finish soon. So let me refresh it and you can see that it is showing succeed. So let's go back to test. And this is a place where we can test the deployed model. So here you can provide the input data. So I would say and it has to be in the form of JSON. So inputs and here we will be providing our inputs. So let's write some code. I would say fun of x return x plus 2. And if I will go ahead and test it, you can see that it was able to identify that this kind of code whatever we have written here is of type python and the confidentially uh, confidential score here is 99 it means it's 
I mean 99.9% .9 sure that this is the code from the Python. So this is how you can test it. Next thing is to consume it. So you, there is a tab here you can see consume. So these are the rest um, keys and the rest endpoint you can see here. And here is the code. So if you want to use it in your application, what you need to do is you can simply take any of these code, whether it is Java, Python, whatever you want, and replace this uh, let me show you quickly. So here you need to just update your key and your input. So once this is done, you are good to go and you can use this code from your other applications, whether it is Python, JavaScript or C Sharp and R. So that's all you can do and how easy it was to deploy the model, although it is not on this platform. So here is the monitoring part. So you can even utilize the monitoring, assuming that you have enabled those inference settings. And here you can see the logs. So whatever we are doing, it will just record the log and you can see it over here. So these are the things uh, uh, which you can do. And it was a pretty simple, straightforward flow in which we didn't write even a single line of code. So in next video, I would suggest you to stay tuned because in that video, I will show you how can you do this entire thing using code. Because when you are writing code, you can do lot many customizations in and out. So stay tuned and we'll see you in my next video wherein we will write lot many lines of code in order to execute this flow from end to end. Thanks for watching.